Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are going to embark on a nice new short series titled Sagas in Minutes. I decided to make this series because I get an awful lot of comments on this channel from people wanting to get into One Piece, but who simply cannot afford to spend the time reading over 900 chapters or watching almost that many episodes. And if you're watching this video in the near future, both of those numbers may be well over a thousand, so yes, it's an intimidating prospect. Therefore, the aim of this series is going to be to condense the mammoth story of the past two decades into a handful of short, digestible videos that will be giving you all of the essential knowledge to jump into the wonderful world of One Piece. And in order to do that, we will not simply be examining arcs, but entire sagas at a time. I should warn everyone in advance that these videos are not a substitute for reading or watching the series. They simply aim to give you the tools needed to delve into the series at your leisure without feeling so overwhelmed. And with that in mind, we're going to begin with the truly classical era of One Piece as we take a journey through the East Blue Saga. East Blue is the first saga of the series, comprising six individual arcs told over a total of exactly 100 manga chapters and 54 anime episodes. And we begin with the premise for the entire series, as we see the execution of Pirate King, Gold D. Roger. His final words to the world are a challenge, stating that he has left all of his treasure in one place, but in order to find it, you'll have to search the entire world. This treasure becomes known as the One Piece, and following Roger's execution, civilization is set ablaze with ambition to find it, commencing the Great Age of Piracy. Twelve years later, we meet our young protagonist, Monkey D. Luffy, who lives in Fuchsia Village in East Blue. His desire in life is to become a pirate and join the crew of Redhead Shanks, a captain who has made Fuchsia Village his temporary base. During this time, Luffy accidentally consumes a devil fruit known as the Gomu Gomu no Mi, which turns him into a rubber man. However, he does unfortunately lose the ability to swim as a result, which is the curse of consuming devil fruits. Luffy proceeds to cause trouble with some bandits and is saved by Shanks, who loses his left arm protecting Luffy from a sea king. As Shanks and his crew prepare to depart the village, Luffy exclaims that he will become a pirate on his own. But not only that, he also claims that he will surpass Shanks and become the next Pirate King. Touched by Luffy's word, Shanks then gives Luffy his straw hat and makes him promise to return it once he becomes a great pirate. And 10 years later, Luffy is ready to set out on his voyage, punching the Sea King that stole Shanks' arm and beginning a legendary journey. As part of his quest, Luffy decides that he will need a crew and sets out to find strong individuals, saving a chore boy by the name of Kobe from a rather large pirate named Alvida, who in turn guides him to Shellstown to meet the bounty hunter, Roronoa Zoro, who is currently imprisoned on a wood thing. As it turns out, Zoro is a swordsman whose dream is to become the world's greatest swordsman, an ambition that he will achieve at almost any cost in honor of his friend and rival, Kuina, who tragically passed away before she could embark on the quest herself. In a very sneaky move, Luffy retrieves Zoro's swords, but tells him that he can only have them back if he joins his crew, and Zoro being a fairly simple man, eventually acquiesces, and the pair go on to defeat Captain Morgan, a corrupt marine officer in charge of Shellstown. Basically, he's a dick. As well as his son, Helmeppo, who very much takes after his father in the whole dick department. And so the two of them proceed to leave Shellstown, although Kobe decides to stay behind and join the Marines, putting into action his own dream of becoming an officer within the organization. Take note of this little boy, you will see him again. From here, Luffy and Zoro end up in Orange Town, where they encounter a thief named Nami and a pirate called Buggy the Clown, another devil fruit user who ate the Bara Bara no Mi, which allows him to separate and control parts of his body. As it happens, Buggy was also a member of the Roger Pirates, along with Luffy's role model Shanks, although they both held very minor positions in the crew. And so Luffy, Zoro, and Nami team up to save Orange Town, with Zoro defeating a unicyclist and Luffy blasting various parts of Buggy into the distance. After these events, Nami decides to make a temporary alliance with Luffy and Zoro, leading the three of them to sail to Syrup Village, where they meet a boy named Usopp and uncover cover a plot by the devious Kuro, captain of the Black Cat Pirates, who was planning to sack the village and steal the fortunes of a girl named Kaya. Usopp tries to warn the villagers about the impending attack, however, he is a renowned liar. I mean, just look at the size of that nose. And so it is put onto our small band of protagonists to stop the Black Cat Pirates, an effort that is rather successful, leaving Kuro and his crew utterly defeated. As a reward for their actions, the Straw Hats are gifted a caravel called the Going Merry, which would go on to become their flagship vessel for the foreseeable future. Furthermore, Usopp was invited to join the crew, with his dream being to become a brave warrior warrior of the sea just like his father Yasop, who was actually a member of the Redhead Pirates, and Luffy met him when he was younger. Now, all of this work has made our protagonist hungry, so we're off to the floating restaurant of Baratier to meet a chef named Sanji, a man whose dream is to find the legendary All Blue, a patch of water in which all of the world's various fish can be found. Now, the restaurant is actually run by an ex-pirate named Zef, who saved Sanji from a shipwreck as a child, and the two ended up marooned on a rocky outcrop. In an act of pure nobility, Zef gave Sanji all of the food that washed up with them, and in order to survive, he severed his leg with a rock and ate it. And yes, this is the way it 
had happened. If you think Zeph lost his leg by saving Sanji in the ocean, then you really need to go ahead and read the manga. But the two were eventually rescued and so Zeph started the restaurant. And as a result of nearly starving to death, Sanji decided that he would always feed a hungry person, whether they be friend or foe. Cut to the pirate Gein arriving on the restaurant and very aggressively demanding food. So as a result, Sanji fed him and Gein went off to bring his captain Don Krieg to the restaurant, who further demanded the same thing for his entire armada. To which the owner Zeph met their request and then warned the chefs of Baratier to prepare for battle with the Krieg pirates. However, before the festivities begin, the restaurant is approached by Drake Your Mihawk, one of the seven warlords of the sea and the man responsible for destroying Krieg's armada in the Grand Line. He also happens to be the world's greatest swordsman and so seeing an opportunity to make his dream come true, Zoro immediately challenges him. And this fight is quite possibly one of the most one-sided conflicts in all of media. Mihawk obliterates Zoro with ease. However, he is highly impressed by the young swordsman's pride and resolve, electing to leave him alive and setting Zoro a challenge to surpass him. And Zoro responds by exclaiming to Luffy that he will never lose again. In the meantime, Nami, being a thief and all, betrayed the Straw Hats and stole the Going Merry as well as all of the treasure aboard. This prompted Usopp and Zoro to pursue her, while Luffy stayed on Baratier to help defend the restaurant against Krieg. And one relatively hard fought battle later, Luffy emerged victorious. And not only that, but he also acquired a new crew member in Sanji, who after much prompting agreed to become Luffy's chef. And so the Straw Hats would all converge again on Kokoyashi Village, Nami's hometown, a territory currently under the rule of a fisherman named Arlong, who was responsible for killing Nami's adoptive mother, Belmare, and forced Nami herself into into a life of piracy, agreeing to release Kokoyashi Village for the sum of 100 million berries, an amount that Nami was astonishingly close to attaining. However, she was betrayed by Arlong, and more desperate than ever before, she pleaded for Luffy to help her. And of course, Luffy instantly agreed, and along with Zoro, Sanji, and Usopp, he went to Arlong Park to put an end to the Fishman's tyranny. And the ensuing battle very much acts as the climax of East Blue, with Zoro reaffirming his dream to become the world's greatest swordsman, Sanji having his first fight as a member of the Straw Hats, and Usopp overcoming his crippling cowardice and managing to defeat his first one-on-one -on -one opponent in the series. Meanwhile, Luffy destroys Arlong Park, symbolically releasing Nami from her shackles, as well as somewhat literally doing it by defeating Arlong himself. Nami then officially joins the crew as the navigator, and our team is set to embark into the Grand Line. But not before a short stop at Logtown, the location in which the previous pirate King Roger was born, as well as the location that he was executed. And this portion of the story acts as an epilogue to East Blue, bringing back former villains like Buggy the Clown and Alveda, as well as seeing Shanks again for the first time since the initial chapter of the series. Furthermore, as a result of Luffy's actions to this point, he is officially recognized as a danger by the Marines, and a bounty of 30 million berries is placed on his head, which is incredibly high for an East Blue Pirate. Logtown also acts as a prologue to the future of the series, introducing us to one of the more fearsome Marines of the world, Smoker, who makes it his mission to pursue Luffy into the Grand Line. However, we also receive another taste of top-tier power with an appearance from the most wanted man in the world, Dragon, who, for mysterious reasons, appears to save Luffy from execution, and with that, the Straw Hats officially embark on their journey into the Grand Line properly commencing a spectacular adventure to achieve all of their dreams and bringing an end to the East Blue Saga. Next time on Sagas in Minutes, we'll be exploring a hell of a lot of the wonder of the Grand Line and saving at least two entire kingdoms in the process by delving into the Alabaster Saga. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items, with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the East Blue Saga. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time. Oh, and uh, something I left out. At one stage, we met a man in a box. Funnily enough, he was also asked to join the crew. And just imagine what life would have been like if he'd said yes. Ah, if only.